So happy new year's 2024. What is up guys? Nick here helping you to master your technology. Should you buy iPhone 13 in 2024? Now last year on the same day, one year ago, I made the same video and it's crazy that I'm making it again here, but the 13 still for sale and one of the most popular phones still on the market today, believe it or not. Let's go down here. We got the pink one on board, but you can see Apple selling the thing for $599, $699 for $256 and a ridiculous $899, which I wouldn't pay at this point for a 512 gig. But if you know where to look, some carriers are offering this thing for 0% or zero down uh, and low monthly payments if you do that type of way of purchasing a phone. And then if you know where to look, you can find the thing for in the fours and in some cases, even in the twos and the threes. So from a pure price perspective, the iPhone 13 is quite a value and I'll explain why. Now the wife loaned me this phone for this content and she did give me some feedback, which I will share with you throughout the video. So stay tuned, I'll share my take and some of her takes on it as so well. Key spec refresh, if you don't remember, 6.1 inch OLED display that is super retina XDR, but not ProMotion. You'll see right here, dual 12 megapixel camera, capable of 4K at 60p. This is a four gigabyte of RAM iPhone with the A15 Bionic, also found in the iPhone 14. This only has the four gigs, so if you want the six gigs of RAM, you gotta buy an iPhone 14 here in 2024. And a 3240 milliamp hour battery housed inside, which is pretty sizable for a 6.1 inch screen. Still pretty similar to current iPhone 15 and the size of that battery. And this is one of the best ever on a based iPhone. Okay, so how is the durability on this phone? If you're looking to save a few bucks, the iPhone 13 in 2024, while well, we have the 15, which basically made the back texture matte, this is glass. So hit it on the wrong corner, it will crack, but it doesn't crack easily. Also, the edges are very solid here for the iPhone 13. They just feel really good and they, they stay pretty clean, unlike some of the smudgy pro iPhones on the market. So the iPhone 13, still a beautiful piece of kit here. I still love this phone. It's durable, it looks great. We're in 2024, I was praising it last year and it's still holding on. So what she told me about the design and the looks um, from her perspective as the owner of this specific model I'm holding in my hand is she said that about one more year to maybe two years maximum She'd want to hold on to this So she said she still likes the design overall, but she's ready to upgrade maybe by the 16 or the 17 So definitely it's still holding on for at least a couple more years I would say when it comes to the pure design aesthetic. It looks more like the iPhone 12 Honestly, the 15 is a little bit better looking I would say but we have the notch so that's definitely looking a little bit more dated by comparison, but because the MacBooks still have the notch, it doesn't look that bad. Um, the bezels are thicker than usual compared to some of the current 15 models, um, but they're not horrible either. And overall, she said the display is still excellent. She doesn't really crave anything, not even the ProMotion that we tend to love as tech fans. So, and, so I don't think everybody really is... Um, too disappointed with the OLED display here. It's quite good here on the iPhone uh, right here, the 13. So overall the design, um, if you look on the edges, they still have that same 5G antenna, power button's pretty similar, silent switch volume markers look about the same. This design, this just looks of it, we talked about durability, but the pure looks of it, it still kind of looks like the latest iPhone. Like you would have to look closely to see, is that the 14, the 15 or the 13? So let's talk about the display quality. OLED display here, it gets plenty bright. Although if you're looking for more brightness outdoors, I do recommend you go to the 15 model if you can afford it. If you cannot, this one is about the same as the 14, so it's very bright. Although it can struggle a little bit in pure sunlight, that's the only con of it. But other than that, it's because the nits on this doesn't get as bright. Other than that, it has the True Tone Dark Mode Night Shift, same things. It can get plenty dim and in accessibility, you can dim it even more. This does display some PWM, so if you are sensitive to pulse width modulation or flickering that is invisible to the naked eye, but you, your eye can still be affected by it. You just don't really tell until you start having a migraine. 
This one, you want to turn on accessibility, crank up the reduce white point, and then raise the display to about 50%. But if you do go to um, something with an LCD, you might notice a difference if you're sensitive to that. Other than that, those are really rare, rare cases. This phone is very good. Um, the 60 hertz display from a technical perspective is starting to feel quite old, but somehow, even with all these applications and a few years later, it still runs like a beauty. It's mostly down to iOS's optimizations and Apple controlling this top to down. I also do think that the notch tends to get in the way a little bit during reading and certain content. Apple's apps are developed properly for it, but there are applications where you'll be reading something and it'll scroll right through the notch. So that is a little bit annoying. This one also is a little deeper than the one on the iPhone 12 and the Dynamic Island is even more of an eyesore. So these, this is not my favorite, never was, never will be but you just have to deal with that if you're gonna be buying this phone right now. But you probably won't care due to iOS. This is still a great phone for almost anybody, I would say. You really gotta use some pro features to need more than this. I could use a 13 right now, run this whole channel all of 2024 and not think twice about it. But you know, why would I do that when I'm covering the latest tech? But I'm just saying I could if I had to. But when it comes to software, um, the phone, it feels like I'm using a 15. It gets all the latest updates whenever you want them. It has the latest 17.2.1. It will be getting 17.3 and iOS 18 will make it here as well. Now, I do think some of the AI based features in iOS 18 might be limited to newer models. So we'll have to see how that gets played out. Maybe not. We'll see if it gets that. But iOS 17.2, about the same. Again, the only difference is like what I've said in my previous contents is that when you go into camera, your settings are less than pro models. Other than that, when you're scrolling through, it's about the same. You don't have the ability to shoot in a 24 megapixel, and the camera doesn't have the extra zoom, which is annoying, but it still has the photographic styles. It still has pretty sharp text. And one of the best things about the iPhone 13 has always been that the camera focus is like perfect. It's like the perfect consumer grade camera. Um, it just always nails it every time. It's got some of the best focus I've ever seen on an iPhone, uh, to be quite frank with you. And it also has some of the best video. So I would say software, you're good for another three years on this phone because the 14 got this as well, maybe longer. We'll have to see how it goes, but the 15 nailed it in the software department and still does to this day. Now, when it comes to the storage, it's actually a pretty good value if you could find this 512 gig max model for cheaper than before because you'll pay the same money for a 15 with one, two gig gigs or a 14 with two 5.6 gigs for the same price as a 5.12 gig iPhone 13. So the storage is a lot more important than you might think if you are a heavy iPhone user and you're trying to save a few bucks. However, I do think the 14 model is a pretty sweet spot value as well if you like the 13 a lot, but you don't have to get that if you want to save even more with a 13. So the storage is still strong. It's still NVMe. It's still pretty quick. Blazing fast, although lightning is kind of lame now. I don't like lightning on here. She tends to love lightning. As a matter of fact, I just recently got her some AirPods Pro with um, a lightning cable because she didn't want the ones with USB-C. She's like, I'm not switching to USB-C. And like everything she uses is mostly lightning still. So she's not down with that. So some people still like lightning, but I personally horribly dislike lightning because my cameras, my tablets, everything is USB-C. So I like the universal standard, but lightning is a thing. Something I wanted to mention since we're talking about connectivity and storage. When it comes to performance here in 2024, the main thing that I'm thinking about is that the iPhone 13 performs just like an iPhone 15. I asked her too, how is the performance of somebody who's using this every day? She said, it doesn't feel any different than your 15. And I'm like, okay, but how's it perform? She said, no lag. I said, well, how's it perform? She said, it doesn't lag. What do you want me to say? It just works. And so that's kind of what I can sum this up. The phone still just works. I said, does anything crash? She said, no. I said, well, do you crave more performance? She said, not really. And then I said, what do you crave? She says, maybe um, a nicer like camera, a little bit of a better pink. <laughs> she really didn't have anything to say about performance other than it's fine. And so what that tells me is that someone who's using this every day, and she's got a ton of applications on here, the phone works. And the A15 should. The A15 is the same one used in the 14 and the 16 Bionic, and the 15 is only slightly better than the 15 Bionic. 
So there you go. The 15 is still a sweet spot value, even though we're just entering a brand new year. This is just a great used or secondhand option. Or if you want to trade an iPhone, get this thing for even cheaper. It's a great option still. Now, when it comes to the battery life, we are looking at a capacity of 96. Now, she doesn't really um, cycle this properly, so she really does kill the battery on here quite a bit. I asked her, how's it go? She said that this phone, if I charge it by the morning, easily lasts me all day long. The only time she's a little worried is if she misses a charge. Then she could be in trouble throughout the day. Um, but the phone lasts all day. The thing is, though, is you got to top it off. Now, when you enter low power mode, because it's a 60 hertz panel, you don't really suffer any real degradation in experience because it's already a 60 hertz. And that can save you in a pinch. It really does help when you're getting really low on battery. But the overall battery life on here is an easy all day. Still a good recommendation. It was one of the best iPhone battery lives on a base iPhone in a very long time. And then the Pro Max, 13 Pro Max, just took that thing to the next level. So can I recommend in battery? Yes. Be careful if you're buying this used though. Make sure the capacity is at least 95 or higher, or I would recommend looking for something else. Because you don't want something in the 80s or the 70s, that would be horrible. The battery does definitely start to not last when it gets cycled too much. So be careful with that when you are purchasing. Okay, so the cameras, dual 12 megapixel setup. We have talked about them earlier. She loves this camera. As a matter of fact, she had the 14 Pro I talked about last year. She took it back. She was on this for the rest of 2023. She didn't like how the focusing was, uh, the aperture, she doesn't understand the aperture, but the aperture was making the 14 Pro's photos. Um, the focusing distance was different. Basically, long story short, this is a point and shoot beast on the iPhone 13. My big issue is the zoom is terrible. I, I don't care, you could love the 13 all you want. I'm gonna tell you like it is. The zoom, hold on, that was the mic making a little clicky noise. The zoom is absolutely trash on this phone. So everybody who goes to the 15, that's a great update. If you want more zoom, please, I advise you, please get the 15, you'll be much happier. But if you don't care about extra zooming, everything else on here is A1. The recording is solid. The recording goes to 4K60. It's still nearly as sharp. I mean, look at this. Look at the video you're watching and look through this camera here. You could see it's just about as sharp as what I'm recording. So this is a really good setup here. Cinematic video comes here, which she never really used. But the 13, man, an excellent piece of kit for video and photo still. Now, let's go over here, flip it around. You can see that's me. Um, front facing camera, still decent, 12 megapixel. We're solid, we're good to go. It shoots very fast. Video on the front, also very good for vlogging. You need a little thing to hold it or it will get messed up. Other than that, man, this thing is a beast. I love it. I'm not gonna show a ton of samples. We did that already in the past. But yeah, I, I could still recommend it. It's it's even better than for casual users. I think it's good for people who are even beyond casual users. Um, but if you really want a little bit more, go to the 13 Pro and Pro Max. Those are a little bit better. From a connectivity standpoint, we have Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.0, Lightning 2.0, 5G performance, better phone call quality than what we had before. So pretty good. I asked her about this too. She said no drop calls, no issues with reception. It's solid. I do feel this thing getting a little warm as I've been having it on for a while. So you could still feel a little warmth when you are using it heavy long term. So put a case on it. You'll never feel anything else. But it's not burning your hand hot like the initial stages of the iPhone 15 models. Nothing like that. And the last thing I want to cover here before we head up out of here and let you get on with your New Year's Day is the resale value. Unfortunately, it's tanking on this phone. Funny thing is, though, is that even when it does tank even more, it's probably not going to drop well below 200 bucks, 250 bucks. So if you keep this a year, year or two, you should still be able to get at least 200 bucks on this, which is way more than you would get for an Android phone. I've seen some Android values at like $30 for $700 I, uh, Android phones that are, you know, it's just like, wow, unbelievable. And those Android phones are only a couple years old. The 15 is going to net you or the 13 is going to net you a two, 250, even after four or five years. Insane for a phone. These aren't, these aren't investments. You're not, you're not investing in this like a stock. I'm just saying that if you want to sell the dang thing, you get a little, you get way more, even for base model iPhones. It's insane. So that's going to wrap it up here for me. If you're looking for an absolute value, lower cost iPhone 2024, 
This is the winner, winner chicken dinner, if you ask me. Um, the 14 is better if you want to swing another $100, $100. I got almost the same opinions on that one as this one. It's nearly the same phone. It wasn't worth it when it came out, but as its price drops, it becomes more worth it because it's a better phone than this by a little bit, but you know, it's newer. So it's a little bit better in that respect. That's it for me. Enjoy your new years. Let me know if you got the 13, you plan on buying one, you're holding on till the 16 or not. There's still a lot of people that love this phone and plan on getting one, maybe even the 13 mini. If you want to see a video on that, I'll catch you on the next one. Let's rock out in 2024. I hope you do have a great year. Crush your goals. Nick here. I will catch you all in the very next episode. Be sure to be well and peace. Peace.